Prime Minister Kristen Michal uh, of Estonia, uh, welcome to Latvia, your first visit to Latvia since taking office uh, here. Your impressions? Absolutely positive because uh, I have been in Latvia for many times even before and uh, uh, all those visits were very positive. So, and cooperation with uh, Prime Minister Evika uh, are always, uh, I would say, fruitful and, and positive because uh, we have also met, uh, we met in, during the summer, during the Baltic Prime Minister's non-official meeting in Balanga and we have met also in the European Council and uh, she's very helpful uh, towards Estonia and towards me. So I would say that uh, the first visit and the impression is uh, quite optimistic. Albeit it's a windy day. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, I said to Latvians that um, this is uh, a free wind coming from Estonia for energy purposes. So please. Mm. Okay, so there's the energy cooperation projects probably in that sense. Uh, one of the main talking points though today was also the Rail Baltica uh, project uh, you were also talking about in press conference. It has encountered uh, financial issues and problems here in Latvia at least. Uh, and uh, we heard the Prime Minister saying that Latvia might not be able to finish it fully before 2030. Uh, you are still, uh, uh, you know, you said that you would manage to do that. Uh, do you think the project is under threat? No, not the project itself, because I would say that uh, to 2030 uh, it's still a date in calendars. Uh, in Estonia we are on, on the construction at the end of this year, about one third of the main line is under the construction and half of the main line is covered in different contracts. Uh, in Latvia I know that you have big discussions about it and the big discussions uh, about big projects uh, it's a normal issue in, in democracy and I would say that uh, from the European side and from the government side and from the Prime Minister's side uh, the main message would be that uh, we should make a push to have this project because it's important for connection, it's important for security. If you look at, uh, let's say, different options, then our transit used to be uh, eastbound, but uh, in the future probably uh, moving the goods from uh, north to south or south to north is uh, the only way for transit to go. And also if you look at uh, people moving, economy possibilities, connection possibilities and security questions, then we need the rail Baltic. There's no question about it. So. I would say, in conclusion, that the project itself is very much needed. The question is that uh, who will do what, uh, who will pay for what, and so on. But these kinds of questions are usually with every big project. So, and in Estonia, even though we have a very complicated budget this year, uh, we allocated more funds to Rail Baltic uh, just to have it done by mm, 2030. And as I said at the press conference that uh, our guys, uh, people running uh, Rail Baltic in Estonia are saying that uh, they might even uh, finish early a little bit uh, before 2030, so we will see. Uh, do you have concerns that you build the rails to the border of Latvia and there's nothing on this side? Uh, no, because as I was talking to Latvian Prime Minister, uh, I would say that the uh, Latvian Prime Minister uh, feels the concern the same way we do and she's very capable and committed to finishing the Rail Baltic. And um, I have met also in my capability as in previous offices, I was the Minister of Climate also responsible for Rail Baltic in Estonia, uh, met with uh, Latvian counterparts, Lithuanian counterparts, European counterparts. Uh, I would say that everybody understands that Yes, this is uh, very expensive and uh, the longer it takes, the more expensive it gets. So uh, the main line is the question that should be focused on, uh, not uh, all the other stations and so on. The main line should be running and up and running to 2030. Mm -hmm. You mean like uh, also the connection to airport of Riga? Uh, for all from our side and probably with the rail Baltic side, I would say the connection to airport would be needed. But uh, the question is that how will it be funded? Will it be funded with uh, rail Baltic's money? Will it be as Latvians proposed with the PPP projects 
that's up to Latvia to decide. Um, economic, economic situation in our country also plays a, a role in this, uh, um, in, in these projects. And for Estonia, there's been an economic recession over the past couple of years. You just got out of it with a slight growth mm -hmm. over the past quart quarter, and your government has proposed, uh, has decided on tax raises, for example, uh, next year, for example, VAT from mm -hmm. two percentage points from 22 to 24%. And this has also caused some dissatisfaction in Estonian people. That is absolutely true. Uh, we have uh, had a long period of economic decline. And as you mentioned, uh, tomorrow, today at 8 past uh, something, uh, the statistics said that uh, uh, quarter to quarter uh, we have uh, already been growing, uh, let's say, in third quarter in Estonia. but. It's still a fast evaluation, so not, let's not be too hasty about it. But uh, I would suggest that uh, Euribor going down uh, and also different uh, uh, options in Estonia, I would say that yes, the economic decline is uh, somewhat near to end and all the prognosis is coming from central bank, from the European institution, commercial banks are saying that we uh, will be uh, having a growth let's say start of the next year or in next year two to three percent or something like that uh, with the taxes uh, yes uh, because uh, we have we will be introducing one tax and one tax only up to 2027 it will be a security tax and it will have VAT income uh, profit tax and it will be temporary because it will have sunset clause it's already in the bill uh, until December 28 and this money will be uh, used uh, to buy new ammunition because Estonia has uh, uh, increased its uh, military expenditure. Uh, we are above 3% already and we are committed to buying 1.6 billion, 1 billion of new ammunition uh, in years 25 to 31. So uh, that's, it, uh, that's why uh, we are raising the new taxes. And I would say that people understand the security concerns. Nobody likes taxes, not the government, not the people, to be honest. But if you have uh, uh, been living next to Russia, you understand what's in question, that uh, will you survive as a state, as a nation? So there's no question about it. And second, f uh, second thing that we are doing is balancing the budget, uh, because we have to meet the master Maastricht criteria, which is to be mm, less than minus 3% of our GDP uh, and for that uh, we are cutting our public expenditure uh, for three years to come by minus 10%. Uh, the only exceptions are, uh, exceptions are military, police and uh, teachers uh, and pensions. Everything else will be cut. It's cutting expenditures and raising taxes like VAT. Is that needed for Estonia too? Uh, there's no other option that if you have to fit into European financial criteria which will influence let's say every homeowner's uh, interest rate as a country as a responsibility as a credibility issue and for the second half if you have to invest in the security if you're ne living next to Russia then we don't have any more options to, to tackle this together. And uh, the security tax is a very broad base. It will concern everybody as security does, from entrepreneurs to private persons. Mm. Uh, on the security and defense, uh, you just had also the new, uh, newly appointed uh, NATO Secretary General uh, visiting uh, Tallinn. Uh, you said today that 3% of GDP for the military expenditures is the minimum right now, for the Baltic states at least? I would say so. I'm, I'm not uh, giving advice to different countries. Everybody will have to decide for themselves. But uh, it has been that in the NATO, it has been like a recommended minimum or recommended level of 2% of GDP to the defense. And I would say that uh, uh, in the years to come and in the security situation we are in, I would say that two and a half or three percent probably would be recommended. And I was uh, talking to NATO's uh, Secretary General, and uh, next year we will meet in Hague, 
uh, and uh, probably there will be question that uh, would the recommended level be 2.5% of GDP and so on. But Estonia is already well above 3% and uh, so is Latvia. So we understand what's on stake. Uh, in Baltics, uh, we have to keep uh, the backs together and uh, we know our neighbor, which is an uh, essential threat to all the civilized world and to NATO. Uh, domestic politics of Estonia, there is lots of discussions now about the uh, next year's municipal uh, local elections uh, and uh, you know the uh, Russian and Belarus Belarusian citizens having the right to vote in them if they have permanent residence. No, that's the Estonian uh, the laws. Uh, in Latvia we don't have this right for non-citizens to vote. Uh, you do if you have a permanent residence. Um, and your party wants to amend the constitution for this so that they don't have the right to vote there. Is that an uh, issue of national security? That is mainly an issue of national security because if you look at elections, let's say in Moldova or Georgia and so on, so the influence of Russia or the fingerprints, uh, fingerprints of Russia's influence are visible everywhere. So uh, to be honest, it's in, in Estonia the main concern is about security. And also the question that if you can uh, participate in a free country, let's say in Russian elections, then why should you choose to uh, participate in, let's say, Estonian's local elections? So that's the main security question, to be honest. And I would say it's not a question about one party. Uh, it's probably by overwhelming majority in parliament. With the coalition, with the opposition, everybody is seeing it the same. Up until now, I understand the design was that uh, the non-citizens of Estonia who have been living there have a say in the municipal elections, but now it's a different situation since 2022. Uh, yeah, we have the discussions uh, ongoing, so probably I hope that next week or week after that uh, we will make some, some news and announcements about it, but uh, I would predict that uh, there will be uh, new rules uh, for Russian citizens, Belarusian citizens, and so on. Separately for, for them? Uh, we will see. Uh, one option is to define who can participate in elections, let's say citizens of European Union, uh, members, member states of NATO, and so on. So uh, right now the legal experts are discussing which way is the probably the most uh, safest and, and uh, the best way for the change of constitution. What kind of a security threat do you see in them having the right to vote in the local elections? Uh, I would say that uh, the main security threat and the question is that uh, should the citizens of aggressor state should participate uh, in uh, every state or every democratic, democratic state's elections? Probably the answer would be no. So uh, maybe I would say 20 or 30 years back in Estonia as whole in Europe everybody had the hopes that uh, Russia will be hit with capitalism and democracy. That has not happened and uh, to be honest uh, right now I would say that every sensible person also if he or she is Russian citizen can understand that uh, free and democratic states uh, have to think about also domestic security, looking at different elections influenced by Russia. Ukraine, uh, the situation on the front lines is not um, so good right now, has not been so good for the past months. And uh, President Zelensky said this week also that he's received only 10% from the help promised by the US, for example, since the, on the from the package from the spring of 60 billion. And Western support levels, there's been issues with that as well. What's your take on the situation right now? Mm, our take is probably the same that in Latvia, that uh, we should uh, do everything and a little more that we can. Uh, to be honest, we have committed 0.25% of our GDP. Latvia has the same. Not all the European countries uh, have this level or this commitment, but uh, we are advocating for it and uh, last European Council we met President Zelensky and uh, my opinion his plan for victory is a very credible plan and this is a good plan for starting uh, to help Ukraine and also to have Ukraine in that position that Russia would be in weaker position. 
So, uh, yes, we should do everything. And I would say that uh, I am quite hopeful for the Europe that uh, Europe has helped uh, Ukraine and they will help Ukraine because I would say that uh, most of the Europe understands that what's on stake in, in Ukraine because uh, the war in Ukraine is um, mm, uh, for freedom and also for our freedom and for democratic uh, uh, based world because uh, if you allow somebody uh, to change borders by force and after that negotiate about it then uh, come on uh, what kind of uh, I don't know what kind of example would you set so uh, for Baltics for Europe I would say that uh, helping Ukraine and pushing Ukraine to win is the only way U.S. elections in a few days only that can bring uncertainty also to our region? Mm, I would predict no, because uh, our, let's say, connections and uh, Baltic's connections to the United States, which is our biggest security ally probably, uh, have always been excellent, uh, no matter who, which administration. So. I would say that uh, people in America will have the choices made and after that uh, the election show, which probably is the biggest show in politics for years, uh, will be over and after that uh, the work will continue. So um, I would say that uh, and even looking at the security wise, Estonia is contributing, we are among top three contributors in NATO uh, GDP wise, uh, Latvia is doing also very much. So I would say that uh, I'm not too much worried about it because I would say that our connections to uh, United States administration, no matter what administration, have always been like partnerships and value-based. Christian Michel, Prime Minister of Estonia, thank you for your time.